Welcome back to The Mint. Of course, we want to hear from you. So please keep your comments coming on our Facebook page, Zim Papers TV Network, and of course, our website, ztn.co.zw. We'll keep your comments coming in. I always try and get to them if I can. I definitely read them every day. So please do, and hopefully I may even respond to you. Now then, of major concern to Zimbabweans of all walks of life currently is the prices of basic commodities. Official statistics state that year-on-year -year inflation was at 175.66% for June 2019, up from 97.85% in May. Month-on-month -month inflation was 39.29%, up from 12.54%. And food basket inflation was a whopping 251.94%. Prices of basic goods have become so high that it's now out of the reach of most Zimbabweans. They cannot afford it anymore. This has forced Zimbabweans to look for places where they can buy commodities for cheaper prices than traditional supermarkets. Enter what we in Zimbabwe call matak shops. Now, the shops are popular with locals for selling products at lower prices than registered formal shops. We sent ZTN reporter Patience Yamburo to speak to Zimbabweans on the streets of Harare to understand this matak shop phenomenon. <laughs> Because kuri nan pane kuti ndi tenge kwa OK pape ino tambira mburu mwangu wa tambira 300. Ndikenda mwa OK flower ita 40 something dollars, 2 kg. Ini mbama kuni nchida almost 10 kg ndi peze mwezi, because ndi newa na 5. Saka kuti ndi kwa nse kura rama ndi noto ya kuno kuita 10 dollars 2 kg flower. Mafuta 20 dollars, at least jiri nan pane kuti ndi pinde mwa OK andi shikuwa nise. Noti peye mburu mwangu wa ito kwa nse kano tenge kwa nse 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 kwa Kuno kuma tax shop tino yange kuti zvino zvacho zvitori nani zvinotengeka zvimwe zvacho zvinohodzeka kana tava kutengesa auto tengesa zviri nani ini zviri kundipa kuti ndiye ntenge zvino kuma tax shop kuno murume wangu ini ni basara anoshanda anopiwa 250 pamwezi saka 250 ndikada kuenda kwa OK kushuka iri kubva ya 1150 ndikada kuenda ku rice iri kubva 45 dollars government <laughs> Sama <laughs> Shirukuita kuti sisi farre kutenga magrosaris e dukuno kuku matak shop. Njia kuti kwa na ok, kwa na ok jinjaga kura jisinga ite. Uka pinda ma ok chai mo chai mo kuti utenga mati shu chai chai arugudai zira twenty four dollars ari four. Kuna kuku matak shop unengo shia tenga kwa netu dollars. Let me get this straight. Prices are cheaper at tuck shops than they are in traditional supermarkets. I'm joined by Darlington Musarua. He's the news editor of the Sunday Mail. Darlington. I have to ask the question, how is it possible that prices are cheaper in tuck shops than in big supermarket chains who technically should have a lower price because of volume of scale? Yeah, I think it's a misnomer to call them tuck shops and uh, these are medium-sized wholesalers judging by the volumes that uh, are moved at these so-called tuck shops and they must be treated as such. So most of them are not registered which means that they do not pay the statutory ob obligations such as taxes rents and also they have got uh, skeletal structure so skeletal structures so in terms of the cost structure staffing. yeah sure. allows them to so, sell cheaper yeah it allows them to, to to sell cheaper but not only that Andy, uh, they also trade in foreign currency so what they are prepared to lose in terms of margins they are, they definitely gain in terms of trading in, in, in what products. about this rumor that manufacturers were skipping middlemen and going directly to these small enterprises if we can call them that or tuck shops and, they, and selling them at cheaper prices than they were selling to, to normal shows. Is, that, is, that, is there any truth in that statement? Yeah, yeah. simply because they are doing what formal businesses are not doing, which is 
is selling in foreign currency. So there, there's definitely a, a motivation to sell in foreign currency because simply if you sort of burn that money on the parallel market, you, you, you get more. But, but yeah. there's also an issue though, because apparently as well, I mean, uh, you know, if I look at this, uh, the tuck shops or the small enterprise, I like that word, by the way, yeah, because they are businesses, aren't they? Sure. However, there are a little bit of dodgy things happening there because they'll only accept payment for goods in cash, okay? And here on the Mint, we've discovered one actually quite frightening thing, and that is that, and this is an open secret, is that the tuck shops or the small enterprises apparently are selling the cash in the street for a premium. And the premium yesterday was 30%. Um, authorities say that these tuck shops are at the heart of a thriving black market for currency and trade of goods smuggled into the country. We can confirm, in fact, that that actually could be true with our sources on the street. In fact, Industry and Commerce uh, Minister Mangoliso and Lovu has said downtown shops are accepting cash only and their prices are lower. What happens is that they buy forex with that cash and trade it, just as Darlington was saying. The margins they get from there are a bit higher than they get from selling their goods with plastic money. So it's a bit of a spin. Minister, I'm here to say that you're kind of right, but you're also kind of wrong, Minister, because we've been told by a source there's a vicious cycle going on here because it appears that tuck shop owners are accepting payments in Zimbabwe dollars or in the old bond note, which is now the Zim dollar, and they're giving it to street dealers who are then going onto the streets and selling it to Zimbabweans at a premium of 30%. And the tuck shops apparently share the percentages with the dealer. All this is done in the open in the streets of Harare in plain view, Darlington. This yeah, is sure. a fact. Uh, you should understand one thing, Andy. Because if you are to trade in electronic money, there's that 2% tax. So it's a cost on the business itself. So it is much more simpler to trade in, 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 in on a cash basis because you get more value. And you have got to consider that there is shortage, generally shortage of money on the, on the market. Let's have a look at what Zimbabwe had to say. Then we'll get back to this point, darling, because that's exactly what I want to get to, the shortage of cash in the market. Let's have a look at what ordinary Zimbabwean said. We sent ZTN Mint reporter onto the streets to find out what you thought about this premium. Maria <laughs> No bandaro kwa kana 30 kana 40 percent. Kundi tuke rifuti kuno tenga chuni ya jani cha kwanza kuti tenga kana kupinda mshuru kujaya mu. Ndi ne ma rinda tenga ni kope cha cha kwanza kutera chuni. There you heard it. That was just a sample of ordinary Zimbabweans who are not amused by this tax. Now, Darlington. I call it a tax because it's 30% extra cost to ordinary Zimbabweans coming out of your pocket. Yeah, because money is not readily accessible from, from, from the banks. Ordinarily, they say that money should be scarce, but in Zimbabwe, it's just too scarce. <laughs> it just doesn't exist. <laughs> it just, it just but, doesn't exist. But there's so much yeah. money on the yeah. street. For the government, it is a much more simpler option to just print the, 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 the stock that is required to liquefy the market. But there is a problem in that, simply because government is sort of gaining a lot from that 2% tax. So if you print more money, you actually kill It could be inflationary as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let me, let me ask you two questions. One, there's a lot of money on the streets. And in fact, just us walking around yesterday, we saw new bond notes on the streets, okay? So my first question to you is, where are they coming from? And secondly, the governor did announce recently in front of the parliamentary committee that they were going to be pumping in 400 million in new Zim dollar cash into the system. And in fact, he estimated he could even have up to a billion in cash. So. First of all, where is that money in the streets coming from, which is brand new notes? And two, has that money been pumped in by the central bank or any news about that? That's a no-brainer, Andy. 
that is definitely coming from the banking system. But wherever you have market imper imperfections, uh, that uh, opens the window for arbitrage and rent sinking. So uh, definitely there might be syndicates that are operating from the banking sector, which are linked to those guys that we see on the streets. So we're talking uh, corruption here. Yeah, obviously. That's what it is. Sure. So, you know, this is bad because this is affecting us as local Zimbabweans. And I mean, I want to just give you a play you a couple of quips because the governor of the Reserve Bank, John Manguchka, speaking to Parliament recently, spoke about the way we as Zimbabweans take advantage of each other all to make a profit. Listen to what uh, the Reserve Bank governor had to say. The time you spoke about you know, a level of information and the optimist taking advantage of the situation. I think that uh, sometimes we confuse indiscipline and level of information. Uh, people take advantage which is indiscipline. They're optimists. They take advantage of the chaos. I was asking myself, why was you speak, why was you asking this gentleman, or asking the honorable minister? But I said to myself, why should people take advantage of people in the society? <coughs> why should people take advantage of the social media to spread lies to the economy? That's lack of discipline. It's, lack of, it's that indiscipline which is uh, which is now becoming an issue in this country. So we all... Strong words there from the governor of the Reserve Bank. Darlington, you know, we are beautiful people, I think. Zimbabweans are fantastic people, probably the best in Africa, to be honest, yeah? But it appears that we've become a nation that's willing to take advantage of other people, our own, our own family, to make a profit. Yeah, these are just the symptoms of uh, a much more broader disease that is in the market, which is the shortage of money. We return to the same fact. Mm. What the government simply has to do is to print the notes that are sufficient for this market. If you take a look at the statistics from the RBZ as of last year, the amount of broad money, which is the stock of money that we have Cash in this actually country, physically yeah, around. it was about 9.1 billion. And of that 9.1 billion, we had 330 being bond notes and coins, and the rest being uh, the US dollars and the electronic money. So what, you, what happened after the statutory instrument 142 of 2019, mm. it actually removed the US dollar component from the market. So we are just left with the bond notes and coins and the electronic money. So you have Which got is short supply. Yeah, of course. So you have got to print uh, more bond notes and coins to sort of take that space that was left by, by the US dollar. All right, but system. look, you know, there is warning for you out there because the governor also stated the long arm of the law is coming for you. <laughs> They're coming for you, so be careful. And in fact, even the industry and commerce minister Mangaliso Nglovu said, we will gradually clean up downtown. Listen to what the governor said. Over the Business Promotion Act, which is approved by the uh, Parliament of Zimbabwe, the Financial Intelligence Unit, the members of the police force, they assist with the matter to ensure that at least uh, there is compliance and there is uh, indeed enforceability of this matter. So it is very possible, and uh, they have started doing so to ensure that at least. All the payments in Zimbabwe are paid in the local, local currency, the Zim dollars. Darlington, those are great sentiments. If we all comply, we can do something and make our economy better. However, I think those are noble words, but on the reality, on the ground, is people are not complying. <laughs> <laughs> but there's an easy solution at the disposal of the authorities. And what they simply need to do is to fiscalize those tax shops so that the Zimra can actually monitor in real time. The tax man can catch you. Of course. And also you are obliged to pay your dues to, to, to the tax man on time. Right. So uh, that is a simple solution. Simple solution. Regularize them, get them into the formal economy. Exactly. Zimra can then monitor them. They have to do tax returns and we can find out exactly what's happening, close them down. But also close down the street dealers. Of course. There sure. we go. That's Darlington <laughs> Musebua, news editor from the Sunday Mail. So, here on The Mint, we urge the authorities, please, to act on this so-called cash premium. It is wrong and is the way for a small sector of our society to make money off the majority of us. We ask the Reserve Bank to move swiftly to ensure that citizens can access cash through four more means. Well, I'm Andy Hodges, and you've been watching The Mint. Remember, we want to hear from you, so please keep your comments coming on our Facebook page, Zim Papers TV Network, and of course, our website, ztn.co.
www.mintersmith.zw. Remember, the Mint is with you 10 a.m. every morning, every weekday. So join us. I'll see you tomorrow morning. You have a fantastic day, and please, all be safe. Goodbye.